Now members, we're moving on to file item 257. Senator Hurtado, are you prepared? She is. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 1940 by Assemblymember Salas, an act relating to pupil health. Senator Hurtado. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, I am proud to present AB 1940 on behalf of Assemblymember Salas, which updates and modernizes the existing school-based health center, or SBHC as it's known, grant program to meet the current needs of student health. SBHCs were first put into statute in 2006, but have never been funded by the state directly. Currently, there are 293 SBHCs that provide access to high-quality, comprehensive health care to 286,000 children in California. But this only covers 3% of public schools in the state. AB 1940 updates the SBHC grant program to match our current understanding of childhood and youth health needs and increases the grant amounts available to schools to construct new SBHCs and expand already existing ones. This bill is a vital tool to addressing the significant disparities in child and youth health and education outcomes, and I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. Any further discussion or debate on this item? Hearing seeing none. Oh, do we? Okay, Senator Ochoa Bog. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> I've got a question of the floor manager. Senator Tato, will you take a question? Yes, so, well. thank you. Um, so these public school health center support programs, school-based health center support programs as redefined, um, are we thinking uh, junior high schools, middle schools, are we thinking high schools? And the reason I'm asking is we're going to start providing uh, student health centers to provide new services, including behavioral health and dental care, which I think it's a great, and it says alongside reproductive services allowed under current law. So I'm just kind of curious, are we looking at placing these um, redefined health centers at what level, middle schools and high schools, and are parents going to be informed of these services being um, requested or provided to our children? Through the so chair, go ahead. Through the president, um, my understanding is that the SBHCs, at least the the services that are provided, are done, or the decisions are being made by the the schools and the school districts. So, I don't want to give you uh, incorrect information, but my understanding is that they would provide any information. The local school districts would provide the information on the services that they that they would offer. But I'm kind of curious about the students. As we're facilitating these medical clinics on campuses and these services are being provided to the students, I'm just kind of curious as what the plan, what is the vision that we're seeing here as far as parent engagement information and who's going to be paying for these services? How are these services going to be billed as we're providing reproductive health services to once again, my question, are we thinking middle school? Are we thinking elementary schools? Are we thinking high schools? What is the vision in this bill um, in the scope when it comes to these facilities being implemented? So, uh, if I may. Through yes, go, go right ahead, Senator Todd. So this is uh, something that is, once again, decided at the local level, but uh, the exact vision, I mean, that's something that I'd have to get from the author for you. But if there's concern, as we know there is in the, um, some concern in the analysis about the reproductive part, I can assure you that, um, that SBHCs, uh, there are no SBHCs that have ever provided abortion services to students. Schools and school districts have that local control to choose what services they provide to the students. AB 1940 does not add reproductive health services to the education code that has been in statute for over a decade. So I, I don't know if that you know, answers your question, but um, once again, that's a local control uh, issue. So as we're voting for this particular bill, I just wanted to make sure that you know, we as legislators understand that if we support these facilities without the, like, local guidance, um, I know, I understand the, the, that everyone is going to be deciding this under local control, but 
we're providing parameters and we passed a bill last year where we prohibited health plans from informing the health plan uh, holders, uh, such as parents, mm -hmm. from um, informing them what services and what um, uh, medications um, children as young as 12 could receive. So my concern with this particular bill would be that um, we're now providing these services on campus without parents knowing health-wise or uh, through their, their uh, health plans what is being provided to, the, um, to their children. And aside for the potential fraud, because we don't know how to verify the, the uh, services being charged to these health plans, I also i am compelled and very concerned about the fact that we're opening a can of worms, per se, as far as services, without the ability for parents to be informed. And so I'm extremely concerned of, of supporting a bill that puts these facilities with new titles, and we don't have anything in place to ensure that parents are in, or caregivers are informed of what their children are going to have access to. Thank you. Oh, Dr. I respectfully ask for a no vote. Thank you. Senator Pan. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. President Sanders. I, I rise in support of AB 1940, uh, a bill that uh, we did here in Health Committee, and I also voted for it in Education Committee as well. And I'm going to speak to it, uh, this bill both as a uh, physician who used to be the medical consultant for a school district, so uh, uh, here in, uh, in, in Sacramento, as well as, of course, a parent who has children in school. What we do know is school-based health centers provide uh, vital access to health care in a, a convenient setting for, uh, for students. Um, it's, uh, it, it helps improve the, not only the health outcomes, but it also, has, also helps the educational outcomes of the students as well. Uh, I think many parents uh, oftentimes are struggling uh, to uh, get health care for their children. Uh, if it's not just affordability, it's also uh, access in, in terms of time, you know, people working and uh, kids being and not wanting to miss school and so forth. And it also becomes a resource uh, for uh, school teachers and staff as well. Uh, they identify health barriers to students uh, who, who uh, are having challenges in school. Health, by the way, also includes mental health. I would make note that uh, school-based health centers, uh, they are uh, established uh, in terms of the types of services delivered, of course, in accordance with the uh, school board, because after all, they're located in schools. Our elected school boards, uh, who of course are elected by the people in the district, uh, who of course have to meet local laws in terms of uh, you know parents being able to access and petition the school board, are the ones who will establish the parameters for these school-based health centers and what types of services will be delivered. I think what is important in the bill is that we actually not overly restrict the types of services, instead allow the local school boards and the communities to decide what services they would like to have their students to have access to. And I think that's a very important component of this bill. Uh, because after all, what we want to do is, is, with this legislation, is ensure that we improve access to not only health care, but also reduce health care barriers or health barriers to students being able to succeed and learn in school. And uh, so uh, in terms of who, who pays for these services, well, um, it, there's a potentially a variety of different uh, mechanisms. Uh, in fact, actually, uh, we here have worked here in the legislature to uh, actually try to improve, for example, coverage for services through our Medi-Cal program and other types of public programs. And of course, uh, we've also looked at how we can try to improve access uh, to uh, working with uh, pr uh, private health plans to, sh to, to also provide coverage as well, particularly around mental health. So um, let's not read into this um, uh, more than, uh, um, than what's actually there. This is about school health in a convenient setting for students and families that is going to be operated under direction and guidance of an elected school board who will decide in working with their constituents, the people who live in their district, what types of services they would like to see available to students in the school district. And at which schools, by the way, as well, whether they just want to do high school, middle school. You know, there's certain services perhaps in elementary schools that they may decide to have, but then not have, but then also have different services at a high school. So that will be decided by school districts and school boards. 
but I would just say that let's help facilitate improved access to health care. Let's uh, facilitate better education for our students and reducing those health barriers by having health services available on campus where it's much more convenient for families. With that, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. Senator Leva. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I want to agree with everything that my colleague from Sacramento said. I too saw this bill in health committee and in education committee. And as the bill outlines, it provides technical assistance. It's to help serve as a, um, a liaison between services and CDPH. And most importantly, it's about access. We know our kids go to school every day. Um, we know parents are working, and they may not have the time to get their children. They may not have to be able to get time off of work. This is something that can help provide age-appropriate care, physical care, mental and oral health assessments in a school setting, a place where students and I think parents feel safe. It reduces health care barriers, as was said by my colleague. I think most importantly, though, this it's, it's a local control issue, as the um, floor manager said, but it's also up to the school board to decide what will be allowed. So this isn't each individual school just deciding what they want to do, and everything will be age-appropriate care. I uh, ask for an I vote. Any further discussion or debate? Senator Grove. Thank you, Madam President. I do agree with my colleague who just spoke that it does provide technical assistance, but it also provides under Section 1, uh, Line 3, school-based health care centers provide quality, age, and developmentally appropriate comprehensive health care and other supportive services on or near public school campuses. We all know that this legislative body has passed legislation to say that appropriate age health care is 12-year-olds for them to be taken off campus for an abortion without their parents' knowledge. So this basically falls in line with that. And if you look at a code section, let me get that for you. If you look at code section uh, 124174 and the definitions, it definitely says the same thing. These centers provide quality, age appropriate, and developmentally appropriate comprehensive health care, which in the case of the state of California, I'm pretty much guessing 99% that means abortion services for our children as well. So respectfully ask for a no vote. Thank you. Any further discussion or debate? Senator Ochoa Bog. Thank you very much, um, and thank you for the code uh, sections that were um, expressed by my colleague from Bakersfield, and, that, and that's actually my concern of the extension of where we're going um, in the legislature with the health care of our students. And I do also sit on the committee on, on education, and I also heard this bill then, and at the first, at my first inkling as a parent, and as a former teacher, as a school board member, um, as someone who's an advocate for, for behavioral health and access to uh, medical services, especially in, in my district where we're very limited as far as um, doctors and nurses and just overall um, anything that has to do with healthcare, at the first instinct, I thought, oh, this is great. This would be a wonderful addition to our communities. And then, and then, it occurred to me um, as I was um, actually um, after the fact, during and after um, the committee as I went home for the month of July, started really thinking about this particular bill. And I thought, wow, it, the dots started connecting in my, in my head about where we could potentially or where this bill could potentially go. This bill, especially with the what I've seen in the past 20 months in the legislature and what we've been passing, um, it frightened me. It frightened me because of what it potentially could be offering our children as young as 12 at our school districts. First of all, the fact that medical um, services could be given age appropriate, which you know my colleague from Bakersfield explained what potential that could be. Um, and then last year with the bill that we we prohibited our health plans from informing our parents. So in my opinion, overall, this bill sounds like a great bill, um, providing health access to our students. But in reality, 
We are empowering our school districts, and yes, with local control, because I do believe in local control on that end, but how many of our parents, and, and I can tell you that we have a, we have many more parents being engaged in this space now uh, with our school, local school boards. But once again, we're facilitating men, uh, health clinics now that are going to be comprehensive in healthcare. After passing a law last year that prohibits, prohibits our parents, our caregivers, from knowing what services, medical services, medications, our children are receiving or requiring. Think very deeply about what that could mean. That means that the state, our school boards, can actually facilitate medical treatment for our children without absolutely no knowledge or engagement from the parents or the, uh, we're basically emancipating our children with their health care in the state of California. As a parent, and in a future grandparent, I'm extremely concerned about where we're going on this end. I respectfully ask for a no vote. Senator Leva. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I think that we've gone a little far afield, and I think that my colleagues are seeing ghosts. I really do not think that a school board is going to approve that abortions can be a, a, uh, performed on any school campus. So we're so worried about what could maybe happen or what we perceive could happen, we're going to take away valuable services from members, or excuse me, from our children, eye care, hearing care, medical care, and nothing in the bill talks about medication. They're not going to be distributing medication to our children. So I just think we've gotten a little far afield. Those who support it should vote aye. Those who don't support it should vote no. I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Thank you. Senator Dolly. Thank you, Mr. President. Member, I rise in opposition. Look, let's just cut to the chase here. At the end of the day, this legislature across the board has been taking parents' rights away. I ran a bill to allow, to just put sex education up on the internet so parents could see what they're, what's being taught at our schools. This is another step. There's another bill coming up, which is SB 1184, by the good, by the, we're going to be talking about services again. I just want to be on record to say that this is why thousands of parents are taking their kids out of public school because it's turning into a health facility without our knowledge, and it's wrong. At the end of the day, parents need to be, be educated and know, you can say about local control, but at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff is never daylighted out in the open where parents actually understand what's happening at schools. But they do understand one thing, that this legislature is moving in a direction to take away your control of your child and let somebody else administer their health care at school. I respectfully ask for a no vote on AB 1940. Thank you. Senator Bates. Thank you, Mr. President. Just adding to the discussion, I do think we, we have come uh, far afield, and that's because we have taken parents out of the equation. This would be a great bill if all you put in an amendment that allowed parents to be part of the consultation uh, before any medication or medical uh, treatment was provided a child. And in particular, let's forget the reproductive issue. I'm concerned about behavioral health, and when children have mental health issues, it requires very, very specific treatment from a psychologist, psychiatrist that's uh, trained specifically uh, in pediatric mental health issues. That would be required, and that to me would be very important for a parent to be advised of. And there's nothing, nothing that requires a parental consult consultation with these uh, particular uh, health uh, agencies within our schools. And creating another health agency within our schools, that just doesn't com comport to logic. I mean, we have community health, we've got Medi-Cal, we've got everything to provide health services to uh, members of our community and put, putting something in our schools that eliminate a parent from connection to that is uh, just, can't comprehend that, frankly, from, from my generation. So I urge a no vote. Thank you. Senator uh, Melendez. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have a question of the floor manager, if I may. 
Senator Hurtado, will you take a question? She will. She's probably regretting right now that she agreed to manage this bill, but here we are. Um, uh, is there anything in this bill that explicitly states that parents uh, must be at least notified of the types of services that their children uh, may receive at this facility? Through, through the president? Yeah, through the chair. To my understanding, this bill, once again, as I you know, uh, expressed earlier, the control is left to the local school boards, the local school districts. Um, I want to just reemphasize that SBHCs already exist in the state of California. There are students that already are part of it and getting access to health care. So I, I, I understand the questions that you're posing. I just don't necessarily, I think there's a lot of fear that, um, of, in regards to this bill, that, that it really doesn't change the way that parents get notified or anything of that sort. It doesn't change, um, you know, medical consent laws. So I want, I really want to emphasize that as well. Um, thank you. So, and I, I appreciate um, your, your uh, willingness to try to clarify this. Um, so the concern comes, of course, from what we've seen over the years and changes in the parent's role in their child's life uh, compared to the state's decided role in people's children's lives. And, and I think that concern is valid. And I've heard a lot of comments today about what people want. And honestly, what I want is for politicians to keep their nose out of our business and the business of our kids. It's not the government's role to raise our children. It's not the government's role to decide what health care is best for them. The parents need to be involved. The parents need to be the ultimate um, decision maker regarding these health decisions for their children. And I'm not buying the fact that parents are too busy. The parents, are, I mean, there's a whole host of other things that you all don't think that the parents are too busy to do when it comes to their children, but for some reason this one, they're just too busy and they just can't get away from work. That is nonsense. I think um, this is an expansion, um, though it may be well-intentioned, it is an expansion and it is a further intrusion on parental rights. And all we are asking is that rather than cut parents out of the equation, that we keep parents in the loop. I think that's a very simple ask. And for those of you who have children, I'm sure you would agree with that, that you wanna know what's going on with your child. But this bill in it, where we talk about the behavioral health services aspect of this, I want you to think about the fact that if your child has some sort of um, issue that they're dealing with, some sort of um, you know, great difficulty that they're struggling with, Perhaps they've gotten to the point where they're thinking about self-harm or suicide. Wouldn't you want to know that that's going on in your child's life so that you could partner with the healthcare professionals to help your child? Would you appreciate it if you were cut out of the loop and you didn't even know that your child was thinking that? Therefore, if you don't know, if the school district elected school board members decide that that's not something that should be provided to parents, then you as a parent, you're not looking for the signs from your child when they're at home, which there are certain things that you would look for. Not only are you not looking for the signs, but if you don't know the signs are even there, then you, you have no opportunity to intervene and help them. So again, I'm sure the bill is well-intentioned, but this goes a little deeper than just wanting to make sure that parents who have difficulty getting their child to the doctor have access to it. This does go beyond that, um, and I would ask that you consider that and I respectfully would request a no vote. Thank you. Senator Kahnblogger. Thank you, Mr. President. I actually had to reread the bill because I uh, got confused. I... Um, my, some, so anyway, um, based on my reading, it doesn't sound like this is taking away any kind of parental rights or involvement in a child's health. 
It's about expanding access to all kinds of healthcare services that can either be found on a campus or can be offered in concert with community-based organizations. The bill talks about telehealth. It talks about working with coordinating entities to make sure that there is comprehensive healthcare access available to students. And we have seen the demise of you know, food programs, of healthcare programs, of arts and education programs um, in our public school systems you know, over a number of years. And, in, and how I read the bill is at least we're trying to uh, reconnect funding um, to schools as it relates to uh, making sure that young people have access to behavioral health, mental health, and physical health care services. I, 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 I don't think that anyone as a parent wants to be precluded, but the language that I read doesn't say that parents are precluded from any of these actions or activities that would be happening on school services. And it only says that this, these kinds of healthcare services would be student focused. So like looking at what children need, what children are experiencing in school, and how do we make sure that we're providing that kind of care for them. I 100% agree with my colleague from Lake Elsinore. Um, we should be keeping our nose out of, uh, you know, people's health care decisions. Like the government should be staying out of our vaginas. I also would just like to share that there was um, an article not long ago that talked about a 10-year-old girl, a 10-year-old girl going to her um, therapist and also trying to find a school doctor because she was being raped by her father. And maybe in that scenario, that child would not be including her parent in her desire to get some kind of access to health care at school. And maybe the school was the safest place for her to get information to help her manage through that decision. I am being specific to rape and abortion since it's been raised, but this is general to general health care for young kids. So I'm urging an I vote, and I'm actually urging folks to get back to reading of the bill so that we are clear about what exactly it does. It does not creep um, into performing, you know, certain kinds of activities on college campuses without the consent of parents. In fact, it doesn't say anywhere in the bill that things happen without the consent of parents. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. Senator Nelson. Nelson. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, year after year through my entire tenure here, we have entertained and passed many bills that eliminate parents from the raising of their own children. And I'm reminded of touring a clinic many, many years ago. I'd just been elected. And one of the people there said, well, they're bad parents, and we know what's best for the kids. I bristle at that when I re relate that story even now. We know what's best. I said, look, I know there are bad parents. I've probably seen more than most of you. But I'll tell you, the blood bond of having a child of raising a child is so much superior to this abstract concept. We know what's best for the children. And another reason we have so diminished the quality of education in California over the decades, we have asked public education to do so many things that they ought not be doing. We can't even get kids through high school that can read or that they can write legibly. But now we're going to put health clinics. And there's no 
provision here that I see that insists and requires parents being, um, parents being informed and saying, yes, that's okay. And that they then, oftentimes with health issues, there's continuing care that is required. So the school district's going to take care of all of that. Well, there's some money, apparently, from an existing program here. But this is going to entail an enormous impact of costs on education. So who's going to pay for that? Let's quit trying to be the parent and let those who are the parents be the parent. As I leave here, I would hope that this begins to wind down and we restore parental authority, parental responsibility, and respect that instead of disregarding it and reinventing it as we are doing here. I urge a no vote. Thank you. Senator Eggman. Thank you very much. Uh, you know what the most important thing that we can teach a child to keep a child healthy their entire life to grow into a healthy adult? Are help seeking behaviors. When a child needs help, they have the sense to reach out to get some help. Those are called help seeking behaviors. That is a healthy thing for your mental health, for your physical health, in order to be any kind of productive citizen. You have to develop help seeking behaviors, right? You don't just sit back like a little victim and say, something bad's happening to me. But it seems like we are turning the school nurse, the school health clinic that I thought we would all want. And when I look at the support, I see dentists, I see eye doctors, I see everyone who advocates for children saying this is good. I say, oh, who's against it? Oh, right to life. Because we want to politicize everything into reproductive health rights, which is so insulting that you want to demonize school nurses to be able to talk about reproductive health. It's not that scary. This doesn't change anything in our law about consent. It changes nothing in our law about parental notification. It simply says we're going to pay for poor kids. These are kids in my district and many of yours, maybe not in some of your district, but my kids, these are poor kids who need help from a school nurse. I ask for your I vote. Thank you. All right. Uh, seeing no further mics up, Senator Hurtado, would you like to close? Oh, who, who, who are you pointing to? Senator Hartado, would you like to close? Thank you, Mr. President. I was going to give a big speech, but after that, I don't think um, I, I will. I just want to say, having grown up in a, in a poor community, in a poor neighborhood, my mother worked nights, my father worked days. Uh, I had to walk my siblings to school before I made it to school. So this isn't about, let's, let's not create fear that, that really, this is not taking, the authority or permission away, or that the decision for a, for a parent to decide uh, the, the, the children's um, health care decisions. This is about poor children and poor communities having access to, to health care so that one day they have the opportunities that, I, that, that we all have. So with that, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on file item 257. Allen? Aye. Archuleta? Aye. Atkins? Aye. Bates? No. Becker? Aye. Borges? No. Bradford? Aye. Caballero? Aye. Cortezzi? Aye. Daly? No. Dodd? Aye. DeRazzo? Aye. Eggman? Aye. Glazer? Aye. Gonzalez? I Grove, no Hertzberg, I Wesso, I Hurtado, I Jones, no Camlogger, I Laird, I Leva, I Limon, I McGuire, I Melendez, no Min, I Newman, I Nielsen, Ochoa Bogue, Nielsen no, Ochoa Bogue no, Pan, I Portentino. I Roth, I Rubio, I Skinner, I Stern, I Umberg, I Wykowski, Wiener, I Wilk. Please call the absent members. Wykowski, I Wilk. Ayes 31, noes 8, the measure passes. Members, we're going to take